My thighs are hurting, and my back, and my butt. It's gonna light this place up. Dangling on the chandelier. <laughs> Focaccia, maybe? Yeah, people you can love and trust are rare. Ah, well, that's shitty luck. And I'm opening a can of worms, potentially. It's a wonderful city, this water deep. Definitely feels like coming home. Goodbye. 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 Oh, for fuck's sake, go away. Welcome back to Dice Shame. This is episode 20, City Slickers. MVP this week is Zia Abraham, one of our longtime fans from the Invictus stream and a friend of the podcast. Good up, Zia. We're finally in Waterdeep, one of the most important towns in all of D&D lore. It's called the City of Splendors for a reason. I am so excited to actually be role-playing in the city. I have never played a game that has ever gone to Waterdeep. This isn't the last important landmark you guys are going to be visiting. Ooh, ominous. This week, I don't think we need to share to anybody else. Just a thank you to anybody listening for following us to 20 episodes. This is the last time we'll appear on a die. I've been having so much fun. Me too. Me too. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Yeah, let's get down to business. Here we go. Okay, so it's called Dungeons and Dragons, this game that we're playing. Hmm. Tell me, have you ever actually played a game where you've met a dragon? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yep. Have unfair you guys have played a lot more than me no i haven't when we played out of the abyss in our home game yeah i believe justin was so smitten with the dragon that he gave it a magical item that i, I had just one given. way of saying it when we play shadow run it was the future but it was still a dragon future dragon did you guys know that this is episode 20 <gasps> oh episode my goodness 20. which oh. is the last time that the episode number is going to be represented on a die oh no oh. natural so 20 whoever is going to roll a die on in this game that's a natural 20 i think that they should get a high five it's, it's a critical episode for us jar. that's true oh yeah. it is a critical i see critical you episode. did there Oh, 2020, so rolling 20. 20s on the 20th episode. 2020, 2020, 2020. 420? So you guys bought some horses last episode, or rather yeah. you bought three horses and a pony. Yeah, so the horses were, what, $100 each? Yeah, so that's because they're exceptional horses. Mm -hmm. They're 100 gold each, and the pony is 30 gold. Nice. <laughs> so that's 330 gold between the four of you. Is it an exceptional pony? Yes. Nice. Would you like riding saddles or pack saddles? Pack saddles. Let's so. get four pack saddles. Great. I'm cheap. At what cost? Five gold each. And there's also feed. We have to get feed for the horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the thing about getting animals. Feed, <laughs> feed is five copper pieces per animal per, per day. Oh. So it's p a pittance. That's nice. Five copper pieces per animal per day? Yeah. Or you can just let them graze uh, in the fields while you guys like hang out. I honestly thought you were going to say, or you could just let them die when you're done with them. <laughs> or just let them die. You can just starve the them to death. Graze, yeah. So, yeah, okay, that's crazy. fine. So we'll throw in like five gold pieces of food. Yeah. One, I mean, you can buy a carriage for a hundred gold pieces. Um, you can buy barding for your horses, which is armor for <gasps> your horses. That's kind of cool. But Hold it's expensive. On. Have we already... Per have we already gone through the purchase falls yes, or are we kind of standing in the stable no 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 we've okay. gone through the purchasing of right. these animals but we're just right. doing housekeeping on cost okay armor is going to be expensive so a riding horse just so you guys all know is a large beast it has an ac of 10 and 13 hit points and it's got a speed of 60 feet barding is four times the cost of whatever armor would be so if you want leather armor for your horse it's four times the cost of leather armor to Oof. buy barding yeah, no. Barding is the word for putting a horse Animal in armor. Animal armor, yeah. So it's, it's four times. So, for instance, if like plate armor is four hundred dollars and you want it for your horse, it's four, four times thousand four hundred dollars. What? It'd be one thousand six hundred dollars. Yeah. Yes, correct. I don't think we need armor for our horses. Yeah. No, because we're not riding them in a battle. We're not planning yet. To. Perfect. So our total gold right now, after our new horses, is twelve hundred dollars. One thousand two hundred nine. Cool. So what I've discovered through reading the player's handbook is that the travel speed overland of a horse is actually not different than the travel speed overland of a, an adventuring party, let's say. However, 
I did charge you more per horse than it says in the player's handbook because these are Amphail steeds. Mm. And so I think maybe they do have some more endurance and are a little bit more fleet of foot than a regular mount would be. Therefore, I am giving the house ruling that these particular horses travel 1.5 times the speed of a human adventuring party. It means you'll get there. If what Whatever would take you a day and a half travel would just take you a day so you can cut off uh, like a third of your travel time basically awesome amazing great so you wake up bright and early <gasps> and you've got some horses to pick up from the stables on your way out of town yes beautiful. my beautiful asta glenn she's beautiful and so even tempered as well balanced almost oh <laughs> you should hear the way she speaks it's glorious what's she saying right now she's saying she's hungry Oh, well, I have an apple right here, Glenn. Nom, 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 nom. And how's oh. your little horsey, Doran? How's Shitfart? Shitfart's good. He's a bit smelly, but that's okay, because so am I. Isn't that right, Shitfart? And he pets the horse's mane. He's a little uneasy still about it, but he's not far off the ground, so... Nay! You can see him. <laughs> yeah. Nay! And how's your horsey, Jack? Amakir is delightful. Amakir. 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 There's, there's an elven flair to it. Once we're through once we're through learning giant, maybe we could try elven. Amakir. Absolutely. I know elven too. Oh, great. Now the fox knows more than I do. Now? I love the duality of Jack appearing as this like really intelligent, knows everything, the, the kind of person that Kraloth and Doran like refer to, and yet... This other side of like red, knowing all the same languages, all the same plants and fauna, yeah. and like brush him off because of the way he kind of carries himself. I love this juxtaposition well, he, between the two. Red is stubbornly not interested in learning things. Afraid I don't of, think that's true. I think I, I think the reason he knows all this is because he loves learning, but not in the same way that Jack does. It's like a heady learning versus an experience. I don't know. Like a hands-on. Certainly, you know certainly I mean? that's not how Jack would explain it. But, but I think that's the... But that's why yeah. we're different. Because <laughs> to me, it's like Red would be learning about mushrooms through being in the dirt with his grandfather. Is Red, would Red teach anybody anything? I think he absolutely would, but not in like the way that he'd realize he's teaching. He learned giant because of the stories being shared because of that experience, not because he sat down with a book and was like, I'm going to learn these runes. So it's just like the different way our brain works. So the journey to Waterdeep that would have taken you three days by way of the long road, now that you have these wonderful mounts... Will take you two days only. And there was much rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> the roads to Waterdeep are paved, and the dwellings, farms, and small hamlets nearby dot the landscape leading to it. What a glorious leaf fall day. Can you smell the bite of cold in the air, Doran? And you look over, and Doran's trailing far behind on shit fart. Red sort of like <laughs> pulls over to the side a little bit and is like, Can you smell it, Doran? Yes, I can smell it. it. Smells beautiful. I love it. I love this time of year, don't you, Kraloth? Yeah, I do. Are we getting close there, Jack? We're almost there. Reminds me of warm campfires and toasty hot cocoa. Oh, tell me about it. Your bodies must be tired from riding horses all day long. Yes. This is a totally different set of muscles. My my thighs are hurting, and my back, and my butt, <laughs> and my neck. And my arms. <laughs> and I like listen to shit for its thoughts, and he's like, My back is hurting, and my butt, and I have to fart. It's like they're, you guys are like the same person. Crumbling together. <laughs> Soulmates. You're like, Arr. And he's like, <laughs> Rising from the shores of its deep harbor, the city of splendors and the crown of the north is a bustling walled city on the Sword Coast. Some merchants have dubbed Waterdeep as the best supply center in the world with the largest collection of superb craft workers, experts, useful contacts, and potential hirelings to be found anywhere. Others caution that the city houses a veritable army of potential enemies for those who aren't careful, and everyone agrees that its wide, crowded streets are full of spies. With many lies. Spies and lies! Covered in flies. It's a wonderful city, this water deep. Uh, when Kraloth and I were in it, it was wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. You must mm -hmm. feel like you're coming home, Jack. 
definitely feels like coming home. I'm I'm pretty excited to see it. It's nice. It's it's lovely in fall. It's it's nice most of the year. Oh, uh, real mm-hmm. sight for sore eyes too. Yes. Um, you you met here, right? We did. Yes, we did at a little tavern known for their mead called the Bee in the Barrel. Actually, love it. It's a <laughs> lovely little place. <laughs> it is. It is. Was that in Dock Ward? You know, I don't really. I'm I not too familiar with the in, districts. No. Yeah, we yeah. sort of stumbled into it, really, both of us. I think you were coming from that terrible plight that arised you north of the city, and I was yeah. just getting off the boat and yeah. staying at a nearby <laughs> shack, and, and we both sort of bumped into it. Yeah, it was nighttime. I didn't even realize I was in a city. I just walked through the walls, went straight for a tavern, and uh, ran into this fella here. The music got me really. I was floating through the city, listening to this lovely stringed instrument. Yeah, being played. yeah, and then. In the tavern, you were floating on the tables, and then I was floating in many ways. Dangling that night, on my the friend. chandelier. <laughs> I think we should float again tonight. If you uh, know what I mean. Speaking of which, you have a place that we might be able to stay as well. Torin's gig, right? Yeah, Torin operates the Copper Cup Fest Hall. It's been in his family for years and years and years. It's it's really wonderful. I'm sad we weren't there for the holidays. They open up for High Harvest Tide and just mm. let anybody who comes in. Nobody goes there and walks away without a meal. It's it's really pretty lovely. Well, maybe they have some leftovers. I'm certain they're open. They're open year round, but the food will be delicious. I can't. I can't wait to get there. We gotta ride through the city, get to sort of the, the southwest bit there in Dock Ward. But how does it feel to be home, Jack? Um, I'm. You know, it's it's always. It feels great. I, I'm I'm excited to be back. It's weird this time. Usually when I'm coming home, I feel a little bit maybe apprehensive. There's a, there's a lot of me that loves being out in the field in the middle of a dig site, exploring something new, and to be here this time is a really different context i mean we're when we leave here again we're going hunting dragons to fight giants to Mm. it's just so different it'll be a big change i mean it's possible that once you leave this place you never come back yeah it might be it might be a really dangerous ride for us from here on out anyway let's go Let's visit Torin and, and maybe grab a bit of breakfast here. Stable the horses there, as Jack suggested. You can say hi to Torin, introduce us, and then I'm thinking we'll head over, drop off that uh, pendant to uh, Z's uh, butler's friends, family, or whatever not. And then I wouldn't mind getting an afternoon beer with you at where we met at the Bee in the Barrel. If, if they'll let us in. <laughs> oh, they'll let us in. Worst case scenario, we'll toast in the alley. There we go. And then, you know, maybe meet that dragon expert. Well, it's been uh, several years since I've been to Waterdeep. It's not a home of mine by any means, but I've sold my uh, my medals and my steels here, and I've been here, you know, during the wars and whatnot. So I recognize much of this town. I've been to the B and the Barrel and and the tavern we're going to, which is sort of nice. So oh, wonderful! I'll follow you. How fun is it to think about separate lives, separate worlds? You might have been served something by Torin well before we we knew you might have. Where you, you might meet him now for the first time or the second yeah, you time. You never know. know it. You never know. The name doesn't ring a bell, but. Wouldn't be the first time. Well, let's go. And we pick up the speed of our horses. Yeah, yeah. a couple of peasants dive out of your way. Ah! Sorry, I don't know how to control this thing. <laughs> I don't particularly like horses. So you're arriving um, in wa- Waterdeep from the north. You have to go through the field ward all the way through the city down to the dock ward to make your way to the Copper Cup Fest Hall. So it takes you a little while to get through. It's a busy day. What happens when we approach the gates? The gates are open. The gates are open. Yeah, There's, there are peasants well, moving know. through the gates. The roads around Waterdeep are well patrolled by the guard, mm. so you would have been hailed by them and have uh, you know a short talk about who you are, why you're coming to the city, but nothing you know terribly out of the ordinary or intrusive being asked. The dock ward is a crowded neighborhood of winding streets, capped off with a vast, new-looking harbor. Hundreds of people rub shoulders and part for carts drawn by beasts of labor. Beggars and sailors and merchants of all races pack the stalls in the marketplaces, and the taverns are full despite the early hour. A three-story tavern leans into the street from its corner perch overlooking the harbor. A warmly burnished glow emanates from inside, and the sounds of a band reach your ears. All of its windowsills are planted with flowering vines. A painted wooden sign hangs above the doorway with the image of a tarot card, the Nine of Cups, and below it, the blocky name Copper Cup Fest Hall. I like the sound of the music coming out of there. Yeah, I think I'm going to leap off my horse and just sort of toss the reins vaguely in the direction of one of my friends and sort of 
rush inside. <laughs> inside, two wide wooden banks of stairs curve to the left and right while a clean bar ahead of you is staffed by a retinue of attractive bartenders in matching burgundy aprons. The place is packed with people eating and drinking and enjoying the music from the band, too must occupy one of the back rooms deeper in the bar. Jack, this is a familiar place to you. One of my favorite things about it is just the way they change the music up around the day. They're, they're like There's always music playing, but it's a, it's a really lively place. It's like daytime rap. <laughs> Yo, we are hanging out. We're down by the lake. It's not a lake. It's an ocean, Drake. No, I'm not Drake. <laughs> That's not my name. Don't call me that. It's okay. We're freestyling today. Early morning freestyle. Doran lashes his horse to the post outside of the tavern. Uh I guess you and I will stable them then. Do you go inside with Jack? Yeah, I follow him. Great. Yeah, and Kraloth and I will like take one horse each with our horses and find the stable entrance. It's just around the back, so you guys have to go like through the alleyway. Perfect. Feed them, give them a little treat, and then Aww. pat their butts and head inside. Not shit farts. I don't want to pat shit farts. <laughs> <butts. laughs> One of the bartenders looks you up and down, Jack, and says, um, Torin, Torin, Jack's here. And down from one of the staircases that flanks the left of the bar, a handsome looking man, a human with auburn hair, comes running and he jumps into your arms. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think I give him a big hug and kiss him hello and... Yeah, he runs his fingers through your hair and he's like, Jack, darling, I was expecting you for High Harvest Tide. What happened? Uh, Would you believe that we walked up a set of stairs into a cloud giant's castle and were carried to Golden Fields instead? No. Oh, man, it has been a hell of a You'll have to tell me everything. And who is this? I'm Doran. And I barge in between them and put my hand out. He (laughs) grasps your hand warmly. I don't think I've let go of Doran's hand, but I'll certainly open up a little bit. This is is, uh, Doran Ironfist. He's a a really fabulous blacksmith and and an old soldier and a a new friend. So pleased to make your acquaintance. You too. It's always nice to meet somebody with a similar sounding name. Doran, I'm Doran. And still with an outstretched hand. Doran Ironfist, I am flummoxed. Oh, you've heard the name before. Of course I have. Well, I have been in the town before, and maybe you heard me ordering drinks at this tavern. I, I wrote about you in a letter, too. No, in a letter, too. That's right. Yes. Uh, uh, will you be staying long? At least tonight, I hope. I, I, I'm not sure really how long our business is going to let us stay here. I hope. I hope for a little while at least to catch up. And what's your business? He throws an arm over your shoulders and Doran, he puts a hand on your back and he steers both of you toward a private booth. I think at that point, Red and Kraloth kind of come through the front door and like... Look around. Smells delicious in here, like roast chicken and warm bread. Uh Focaccia, Uh maybe? All things that need to be in my stomach right now. Me too. And we walk over to the bar, kind of not even noticing where the other guys have gone just yet. Food. Very simple animals. 100%. (laughs) I feel like like we just love, like, what's that style of anime? Anime where the the food, like... um, So good. um, Like Studio Ghibli stuff? The Studio Ghibli. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the food is just, like... incredibly detailed, so and detailed beautiful and i just have like an image of our cartoon selves like in front of these yeah. like plates that are piled so high good and, just... and i think this for some reason i get the impression this place like obviously yep. with the heart harvest and stuff excels at like really decadent of and delicious course. foods and we're like ordering them and then yeah my passive perception i notice them in the corner I'm like oh let's get enough for everyone and i start like Bringing the two plates over. Mm, they're like wobbling. We slide the plates down and slide in. Hello. And who is this, Jack? Torin, this is, this is uh, Red and Kraloth. Uh-huh. They've been traveling oh. with me as well. Um, well. So nice to meet you, finally. Nice to meet you. We've heard things about you. And mm-hmm. Jack's told me so much about you. P- please make yourself at home. We are doing so right now. I can mm. see that. Is there anything else I can get for you? Another beer. beer. And I empty yeah. my beer mm-hmm. in the cup. He does a little claps at uh, one of his serving staff and they hustle around trying to clear out the the recently drained glasses from the table and Torin is immediately just like laser focused back on Jack. He's like, "So, you have to tell me everything." Um, I mean, the the 
There's so many giants, actually. And like I think Jack goes on like scatterbrained a little bit, yeah, anxious, nervous, yeah. like explaining the the like whole tale of, of what's happening. can't finish one sentence. Yeah, like he's, he's so excited about off. the next idea. To- yeah. And Torin's talking on top of you, too. He's like, and you know, the Lady Laryl Silverhand, well, of course, she's a human, but she looks so good. She's two centuries old. Well, no, and I, I know and my mom used to, I met her because their sister in Silvery Moon, and they're like, I think we're having three conversations yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah. And I think like Red and Kraloth and Doran are looking at each other for a little bit and then I think Red just makes him move to like slip out of the booth not in like a rude way all right and then like Let slides out and like up. goes to find something else at the bar yeah, and like yeah. has have another drink there just because yeah, it's like yeah. a private moment Doran finds his way to the bar as well yeah pulls himself up on one of these large bar stool chairs <laughs> you just did a little and, hop in your seat very adorable and begins chatting with you know the most beautiful woman at the bar of course you know I've killed a giant. Is Doran a suave dwarf? Yes, okay. absolutely. And uh, while they do that, um, Kraloth is kind of going to notice. And he just like, he's just pretending to be in the conversation. He's nodding at Torin and Jack. And he just is putting food into his arm <laughs> as he's nodding. And he kind of like bundles his beer in there as well. And kind of the plate that over. Red left behind. You're like picking stuff off of. Exactly, and, exactly. Yeah. And then I just continue my devouring at the bar. Yeah, and you like as you walk over, you see Red's like, and no, that's not what it looks like. And there's like a guy with a scar over his eye, like grimacing, like angrily at him. And Red's like pulling magic out of his ear and be like, see? And the guy's just like <laughs> 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 pissing off people that are like not meant to be. Kraloth is going to see that and it, he's just going to shrug and he's going to go back to it. And later on, we see people escorting the angry gentleman that Red mm-hmm. was talking to out mm-hmm. of the bar. You know. He's got a big cut on his forehead, and I'm like, sorry! And like, <laughs> back the, bar. the maitre d's, like, very cleverly assisting the man. He's like, oh, don't worry. We'll permit you to... We'll kill that uh, No, no. no. <laughs> it was an accident. It never happens. It'll be drinks on the house. Next time you come, please, uh, if you don't mind. Kraloff, I tried the old 3-4, but it cut his forehead. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, you gotta be... You gotta be- careful with, with that you want to join me by the stage yes this musician's fantastic meanwhile Torin's like tucking a lock of hair behind jack's ear and he's like honestly jack to mention that you think that it was the zintarum agents who coordinated a coup against lady nandar to write it so plainly in a letter you must be out of your head there was just so much going on i needed to communicate everything we needed to get that the help you you saved a whole village by no, getting it over there the, we I were did able to nothing seriously if, if if it wasn't for you, we would we would have had to fight a whole village, and because of you, we we ha- we got to celebrate and and hold a funeral, and it was really oh, it was a hard day. It shifts over to Doran and this other female Doran, and I took on the whole score of orcs myself. Well, no, I, I wasn't myself, but it was my friends. The word friends rings out over top of the Aww. bar. And I think we all kind of link eyes at that point. You guys all say friends simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. Torin says, I've, I've been wanting to ask you this for some time, Johan. You're the dearest person in my life. And the closest to my heart anyone has ever been. From what you say, it sounds like you could get in a whole lot of trouble. I, I'm afraid for your life. Darling, you're a lot of things. You're, you're a geographer. You're an alchemist. You've got a book on the go. You were talking about doing that dig a while back. And then, I mean, there's that offer from the Delul Academy. What I'm saying is, why don't you stay here with me? And there's this really, like, a pause. You can, you can see Jack's been afraid of this question. Like, He's it's, looking it's, into your eyes. Torn, I want to. I, w- I want to stay. I, I love you I love this place I love the, the idea of this life we could have together and and I, I right now like a couple of days ago I got told about a prophecy and giants reordering the world and and I I want to but I I can't I'm sorry he stands up from the table and picks up your glass Don't. and wipes the spot underneath it I I understand. No, Torin, please. And nothing has changed between us, Jack. I just... Uh, I guess I'm looking for something that you can't give me. I, I, I really hope that you change the world and that these giants... I hope they don't know what's coming for them. 
And he stands up and he goes behind the bar to like confer with some of his serving staff and uh, get back to his job for a little bit. Yeah, I think Jack's probably crying a little bit. Oof. And at that moment, Doran comes back and he's uh, a little bit tipsy on his feet. He's <laughs> carrying he's carrying two beers, one for you. And he says, oh, we're Torngo. Oh, he had to get back to work. Ah, well, that's shitty luck. My luck's not much better. It turns out that female dwarf was actually a male. It's tough to meet people that, that you can trust in this world. And he sits down beside you. Yeah, people you can love and trust are rare. You shouldn't let them just walk out of your life. Definitely not. As I think back to my own situation of broken hearts. Red is sitting at the bar as Torin enters the frame on the other side. Yeah, right? yeah. And Torin, you know, Jack has told me so much about you. I'm so glad you guys, you light each other up. He's really something... He is. And you know what? There's something about that man that just makes me want to kiss him. Um, okay. And you guys have been apart for so long. I'm so happy that you finally get to embrace and spend some time together. Because really, at the end of the day, these moments are all that matter. Nothing else. And I, like, pick up a drink and, like, turn around the bar and, like, go to toast Jack, who's, like, talking to Dorn and turn back and Torn's like, gone. He's like excused himself. Yeah, he mutters as he leaves. He says something like, I guess these moments are all I have. To that! Right, like, down the, the drink. Um, Kraloth, where are you? Kraloth uh, had a little moment with the musician where he pulled out his, his tambourine, oh. and the musician was playing <gasps> something a little bit more oh, yes. jaunty and sees the tambourine, and does he let Kraloth play? Um, he doesn't so much as welcome you up on the stage. There's a, It's a trio that's playing. Okay. So the, the lead guy looks at you, and he's like, okay, sort of gives you a weird look. But uh, the, the guy who's playing the dither looks at you, and, and he kind of... He kind of gives you an encouraging nod, and he uh, he changes the beat just a little bit. Okay, and kind of syncopates it. And Kraloth initially smiles, but then his face is fully focused, and sweat begins to form on his brow <laughs> as he hits every offbeat exactly where it needs to be, and is taking it so incredibly serious that he's like looking at each member of the band and making eye contact, and. His tambourine begins to to glow. It, <gasps> it begins to glow with this with this radiant color, and then all of the instruments begin to glow with this radiance. Uh, but he's totally just tuned in to the music, <laughs> just hitting. And it's still freestyle rap, like old time, <laughs> old timey, <laughs> old timey rap. You Dude. elves and dwarfs, let me hear you say, "Get off your horse, get ready to play." <laughs> two two elves with like backwards. Bonnets. I got your pointy ears. I got your pointy hat. Don't go far without that cap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, there's something that uh, that I think Kraloth takes this just about as seriously as a, a battle, mm-hmm. where he's got his teammates who who are you know supporting him and keeping him alive, and this it's completely transferable to music for him. So he's he's casting sacred flame. And yes, ma- <laughs> all, of their, all of their instruments are going to light this place up. And maybe, and maybe, yeah, it's lit up in the emotional sense so much that ever all of a sudden people start dancing oh, and it becomes Red is like, like luring Jack and Doran out of the booth. Like, Come on, guys. I think Jack's going to get up and go outside. Um, Jack gets up and goes outside. It's about late afternoon now, right? It's like lunchtime for sure. I would say after a fair amount of time and after a round of applause from Kraloth solo, when it sort of calms oh, down. Oh, oh, what? Well done, buddy! Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, well, it was all, it was all them. They're the, they're the real talent. No, I no, didn't know no. You had it in you. no, I, I couldn't. I'm actually getting kind of hungry. I think we really ought to get over to Z's friend's house. Let's find Jack and, and deliver this heirloom. See if we can't, uh, you know, help out that butler. Uh, Doran drunkenly stumbles out, and, and and on his way out, he's ho- hollers, "I'll see you in a little bit, Torin." Bye bye. Thanks for letting me play with you. Yeah, one of the um, minstrels claps you on the back, and she's like, "Anytime, anytime." <laughs> Red actually like stops a few steps out of the door and is like, oh, runs over to the bar. Is Torin still behind it, or is it just a? Yeah, bar? he's. Yeah. Say, Torin, um, do you know a house, Thon? Sorry. Y- yes, of course. Do you know? Could you maybe point me in the direction? Yes, House Than is in the uh, the trades ward, I believe. Wonderful. Their, their villa. Oh, no. It's fairly unremarkable. <laughs> Very good. Gentlemen, always properly dressed. As, as we all are. I'm going to roll insight on him. 
on Torin. Yeah, with a 22. Um, he doesn't like you very much. Fair enough. I don't blame you. I get that impression very clearly, and I say, oh, um, fair enough. Well, it was nice seeing you. Uh, very nice to meet you. And I zip out of the bar. Whew. That Thorin is a chilly, chilly cat. Interesting. For running such a warm bar, that would surprise me. He didn't like me very much. Oh, sure he did. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, how would you have any idea? Uh, I get a sense for these things. I, I wonder if it's because of what I said about him and Jack. Well... What did, what did you say about him and Jack? I just said it was nice to see them together again, but he seemed to be upset by it, maybe. Well, just observing myself uh, from across the room, they they didn't sit together very long, and when they did, I imagine that they, uh, the distance is probably causing some problems. Should I go back yeah. and apologize? No, oh, no, 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 no. It's no, best no. to stay out of these yeah, things. Let, it, let time just, it'll settle down. Oh, there's anything... No, 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 no. No, you're red, right. Red, 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 red. There's anything dwarves know how to do, it's how to just ignore your feelings, okay? Yeah, you right. don't want to make it more of an issue than... And trust me, you will. You will. Fair enough. Well, let's go find Jack. Where, where is Jack when they come across? I think Jack left uh, Kieran sort of waiting outside the door just so that he could let Kieran be found and Kieran could tell him and he didn't have to, like, they didn't have to go looking for him, so... But I think he he sort of went for just a short walk sort of towards the... Down the harbor. The ocean just to sort of get get a breeze. And once they started moving, uh, have Kieran come and fetch him. And... So it happens that Jack finds you. Oh, we were just looking for you. That's good. Um, where to next? Well, probably to house Than. Than. Yep, oh, Than. yeah. They're, they're just down this way. Um, I say, is everything all right? You didn't spend too much time with your friend. Uh, you know, we, we've got a lot to do today. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Can I roll insight on Jack? How yeah. do I roll insight against Jack? If Jack doesn't want you to know what's up, he can roll deception. Otherwise, he'll just tell you. I roll it anyways, just because I'm curious what your number is. Let's do it. If it's a contested check, you can roll your deception against his perception, or insight, rather. Yeah. 12 on my insight against to see if I can tell what Jack was upset about. Uh, I got an 11 on my deception. So, nice. uh, Jack's obviously miserable. Um, it's clear he and he and Torin did not have a, a really good moment there when they left and uh he's trying to focus on something else oh like red like literally <laughs> makes that as he like reads your face he's like uh, right yes house uh, you know the way let's follow you and doran just kind of lets out a grumble and looks at red mm. i'm leaving I told you so I just- <laughs> <laughs> um they sell a lot of wine house house thon it's one of the one of their big things um Ooh, I, could go for they- some- I like wine me too yeah wait Way back in the day, I don't know if you've heard of Blackstaff. He's a he's a wizard. He's sort of. Uh, uh, I've met him. Yeah, his. <laughs> no, it was a long time ago. He's been dead for a long time. Uh, it was a long time ago when I met him. I, he was very old. Did you meet him, Doran? I'm hoping. <laughs> very cool. I'm going with it. Sure. A jack. Why not? <laughs> How old are you again? You're one fifty. Gonna... Or... Anyways, his his granddaughter is is. Uh, my cousin and and his no dad way. was from house or mom was from house thought it's my family gets really complicated and it is all tied in a water deep but anyways they're they're practically family I'll, I'll show you where they are yeah it's, it's fine um jack's like really trying to like show off you head to the villa of house than in the northern part of the trade ward it looks down over the city of the dead this really beautiful ancient cemetery mausoleums and crypts from all the high families here in waterdeep if you ever get a chance as a as a follower of kelimvor i don't know if you if you were here last time you were in the city but the temples here they're really they're really wonderful hmm. um you should you should check them out um i'd love to see them i didn't see a ca- temple of kelimvor when i was here last actually oh we're, we're we're just about here red was like hanging back at the city of the dead the graveyard he's just staring at it for a second and the minute he kind of hears them moving too far out of sight he kind of snaps out of it and continues skipping up ahead there are some elaborately carved stone gargoyles on either side of the walkway leading up to house than's large compound they have uh, some lawns which is not very common inside of the main part of Waterdeep, and a beautiful estate wow this is almost as beautiful as my home Doran exclaims as he walks into the compound with grass. And he leans down and touches the, the soft grass. Wow. It's as if a thousand sheep were in here for a hundred hours, making this soft and it's quite breathtaking. Low. There are other ways to cut grass. No. A scythe? 
Oh, yes. A stooped and wrinkled old human man appears on the front porch of this uh, estate. Hello. Uh, welcome to House Than. Well met, friend. Um, Do you have a calling card? We have something like that. A, a friend of mine uh, asked us to present this to the butler uh, here, and I pull out the this ancient necklace that Z gave us. No, oh, uh, that's myself, of course. My colder, my scourge service. It's lovely to meet you. Um, he makes a very deep bow. Uh, I, th- I think Jack will bow back not nearly as deep. He bows more deep. Ooh, he's good at that. It's a bow off. Oh, oh. these rarely happen. I recognize that pendant very well, young master. Z. Yes, she's doing quite well in Goldenfields. Slayed well, a giant a couple of days ago. I'm glad to hear it. Her family and my family are very old allies. Old is one. Old, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doran, you think a strong wind would blow him over? <laughs> he clears his mouth. Here it comes. The mortal coil. <laughs> and he dies. <laughs> Uh, well, that you come bearing her pendant means that you seek to retrieve her family's wealth from my keeping, I suppose. That was what she had led us to believe would happen. And just around the side, there's a nice pool house. and Just wait by there. Mm, pool. There's like a little cottage around the side of this uh, estate. And this beautiful waterfall that's been carved out of the hillside. And so uh, he he's directed you toward the cottage and you hear the massive iron door close as he enters the house. <sighs> what a nice man. He seems very he's pleasant. So old. Mm, incredibly old. You see his little wizened head peep out from behind some curtains in the, the estate looking at you Wave. guys. Hello! <laughs> We're right, yeah, Red's right in front of it. <laughs> I wonder what this uh, inheritance is going to be. Probably a sheep. Look at this manicured grass. <laughs> Cullum Vore would say not to have any expectations. Be happy with whatever enters the present moment. I have zero expectations. Honestly, I'm happy we did the favor for Z. She was so helpful. That's yeah, right. Absolutely. Another minute goes by and then... Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't waiting. This better be a thousand gold. <laughs> The door opens and he shuffles very slowly across the lawn toward you around the back. Shuffles. Shuffles. Shuffle, shuffle, I shuffle. I knock an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Kraloff starts to pray. He comes up to you. He's not holding anything. He's like, oh, I misjudged myself. It's a very big trunk, so you'll have to come inside. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Ooh. And we head inside. He's he leads oh. you into the house, but like he's like super step step slow. Yeah. <laughs> so like, Can I pick you up, sir? Oh what no. I'll help. Would, <laughs> you no. grab his head. Oh oh, <laughs> oh God. I'm Bring him inside no, no. the house and just set him down. <laughs> oh well, here we here you are. He sets you guys up in the drawing room and uh, pours you a shaky cup of tea as a couple of other younger, more able-bodied servants uh, go to fetch um, Master Z's young trunk for these nice people. And you hear a dragging sound in the hallway as it is brought into the drawing room for you to examine. It's like painfully dragged across the hardwood floors, like <laughs> leaving deep gaps. 600 uh-huh. meters. Yeah, but he was worried about He's the like dirt on He's like wringing his hands, boots. like looking at the gashes in this beautiful floor. Oh, that will never buff out. We open the chest once it's here and see what's inside. You open the chest... The four of you gather around and your faces are illuminated by the bright, glimmering lights of treasure. Treasure. There is a silver decanter that is decoratively engraved Mm. and a hollow metal tube about a foot long. Jack might like to take a close look over these items. He's always interested in in old things. Mm. Would love to sort of just give them a once over, uh, sort of get a sense of feel for what what their qualities might be. 
You want to try to discern what they are, That's or you just want to look more closely I mean, I'd love to them. discern what they are, yeah. Both of them are magic. <laughs> Doran leans in to Jack, and he says, Whoa, what are they? You may roll Arcana on them. 16. On the flask or the uh, Let's start with bar. the two. And I'll roll on the other one just because I have dice with a 17. Wonderful. Um, you pick the flask out of Jack's hands as he's concentrating no, he's on the two. No, he's looking at the other I'll look at the yeah. other one. That's what I mean. Like Jack starts concentrating on the one and you're like, here, give me that. Can oh, you okay. take the other one in your hands? I'll do it nicely though. So Jack, you uh, think this could be a decanter of endless water, which feels uh, light, maybe about two pounds. And probably if it is what you think it is, would uh, slake your thirst forever. Among other things. Is that going to kill you? The tube that red you hold in your hands, you uh, recognize this to be something that will help you open locked doors. So anyway, I'm preparing to have company over. So if you don't of course. mind. The, these are both beautiful looking items. This, Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yes, yes. And you've been more than welcoming. So thank you. No, of course. Sorry, sorry, I picked you up. I will. Uh, I forgive you, and I'll. I'll see you out now. Of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm. Well, <laughs> goodbye. Bye bye now. Goodbye. Thanks for your we're hospitality. Us out. We're just like, <laughs> ah, and we just push ahead. Goodbye. 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 Au revoir. <laughs> goodbye. He bows. Oh, are we leaving? These are some wonderful magic. Goodbye. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Goodbye. go away. <laughs> We're like a mile down the street. We just wait. Listen. Goodbye. Yes, you guys got some magic items. Um, that's exciting. Who gets to keep them? I would love the chime of opening. Oh, 100 percent. Hundred percent. Uh, if anybody wanted to hold on to, to the decanter, that'd be cool. Well, so so so, what do you do with this decanter? So it's it, like you can drink it, and then you're not thirsty. Kraloth, let's say that for the next hour, you walk around cradling this decanter in your arms, just like looking at it and turning it over in your hands. <laughs> That's how you learn a magic item's abilities. I see. Right. 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 So when you say a command word as an action and remove its stopper. It will produce an amount of fresh water or salt water, whatever you choose, out of the mouth of a flask. If you use a command word, you can say stream, fountain, or geyser, which is one gallon of water, five gallons of water, or 30 gallons of water that gushes forth in a 30 foot long, one foot wide geyser that you can like target at things to knock them over or knock them prone. And do they need to do a strength save? They do a strength save. Or take bludgeoning damage and fall over. Oh, okay. Uh, if you wanted the, the decanter, you're welcome to it. Would Kraloth want the decanter? You also don't have to like keep it. Like we can trade. Like if yeah, you that's true. Tired, like, I it's might not, as well. It's not bound to you. Yes, that's true. That's true. I think it's a cool item, but. No, give the decanter to Jack. Sure. Yeah. You want to take yeah. the decanter? I will happily hold on to it. Cool. Are we walking back by the graveyard? You can see it. Is there something about the, the City of the Dead that caught your attention, Red? No, 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 nothing like that. Just when I came here for the first time in Waterdeep, a week or so that I was, I, I ended up floating around this place and felt very attached to this wonderful little monument to, to death. I think that's probably why me and Kraloth get along so well. <laughs> Let's uh, keep moving, I guess. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? I, I just want to hang back for a minute. This is kind of the first place I saw when I landed. I wouldn't mind a moment alone if that's all right. Of course. Red, where do you go? I just hang out at, by the City of the Dead for a minute until these guys kind of all pass by. And Red takes a second and just kind of breathes in the salty sea air. I feel like this is sort of on the edge of the city and you can see the new docks down below. And after a second, Red just closes his eyes and he does that primeval awareness and he feels the presence of his friends like getting far enough away. Then he opens his eyes and he hops the fence to the city of the dead. And he kind of walks between the graveyards for a moment. And he reaches into the bag of holding and he takes out like 200 gold pieces. And he wraps them in a piece of leather. And uh, he pulls out a piece of paper and he says, this should make us even, and signs it red. And then he rolls it up, pulls out a loose stone, slides it in, and puts the stone back in before he hops back over the fence and catches up with his friends. 
Well, it's been a long road so far, 20 long episodes, and here we are. Thank you so much to everybody who's stuck with us so far. There is plenty more to come and a lot more mysteries to unveil. See you soon, and remember, keep shaming those dice.